Welcome back then to Repton. First of to do of two League Cup semi-finals here today. Our third game today, and we've got London Genesis here in red against Tier One Maidenhead United. Promised to be a really good game this one. Probably the tie everyone was waiting for, the one that people are most excited about. How can Genesis, the, you have to say the runaway lead leaders of Tier Two South, fare against a really what have been a really strong Maidenhead team in Tier One. Two starting lineups then. Mario Gazzoli, Genesis captain, starts in goal. He'll be joined by Shane, Claudio Ribeiro, who we all know from his London Halvesia days. Cowie De Silva, who scored probably goal of the season so far earlier here at Repton a few months ago. And Luan Araujo. For Maidenhead, their starting five is Ben Lazarus in goal, Harry Toza, Diego Luz, Seth Burkett, who scored an absolute screamer here last weekend and Christian Edwards. Their bench is Aaron Carter, Carl Tappin, Fran Pastor, Jacob Evans, Jack Pateman, Tom Dutton, Scott Hargreaves, Dan Abramson, and Phil Lant. Two referees, Paul Whaley, Matt Bruffel. This one with Ian Vaines and that famous futsal beard as the timekeeper. Comes to be a really interesting one this. As we say, London Genesis been really, really strong in Tier 2 South. Ran away with it. We've had Kent, who we've just seen in the League Plate semi-final, put their place in the final. They've ran them ran them strong as the second half of the season's gone and make, kept them honest with it. But Genesis, you have to say, have been in control of that division all season. Already booked themselves a place in the National Cup final. Beating some strong teams along the way. But this is a really, really stern test for them against a Maidenhead team that have, have really impressed people in Tier 1 this year. Recruited really well in the summer, Rich Oxley. And with that recruitment has come, deserved performances still challenging for that top four and that playoff spot. It'll be between them and Loughborough who joined Bolton, Bloomsbury and current table toppers Manchester in the end of season round robin. Could see Ben Lazarus on court. Took a knock actually in the warm up on his nose, so he's fit fit to start. Did the whole warm up with ice almost attached to his face, but wasn't missing this one. And yeah, great to see Claudio Ribeiro back on court for a big tie, given everything that went on with Helvetia at the start of the season. He's been pivotal for everything that Genesis have done this year, and it will be him wearing the nine in red to kick us off. Keep an eye on Genesis 13, Cowie De Silva. As we said, he scored a, a, a really fantastic goal. Went viral on social media early in the season. Lively 1v1 player. Wants to isolate. Wants to try and engage. Wants, wants to entertain. And it's something you'll see throughout this one. And there is Cowie. Goes back to his number eight, Shane. And Genesis looking to move the ball quickly, but he breaks down. And Maidenhead will get control with Seth Burkett. Here is Toza, probably Maidenhead's main man. Signed from Manchester in the summer. Really, really impressive. And impressive in England camps as well, we're led to believe. Probably their standout performer. And one of the standout performers in the whole of the NFS across the course of the season. In every game, you know, very, very consistent performer. Really good from Burkett there, reading that clip ball. Looking for Claudio Ribeiro. Here's Toza again. Looking for Diego Luce. Early strike blocked. And it's a maiden head kicking. Both teams just trying to work each other out here. Genesis quite happy to, to drop quite deep here. And they'll look for those counter attacks. We know with that explosive pace that we've already seen very early signs. And there we go. Gazzoli. No disguise on that one, looking long and early for Claudio Ribeiro. Just raced away, away from him. We touched on it in the last game. Very, very narrow, but long caught this. Great for a team that wants to counter-attack. But also a very quick court as well. So if it's not controlled as you do it, it can race away from you. Here's Luz again. He goes back to Toza. Happy to recycle, keep the ball on halfway. Looking to engage. 
foul there. First one of the game from Ribeiro. Just wrong side of his man. And a maiden head free kick. Round 12, 30 metres from goal. Really good area. Edwards and Toza over the ball. And I would imagine from here, Harry Toza will look to test Mario Gazzoli in the Genesis net. Doesn't. Looks for Edwards. It's well intercepted. And Maidenhead have a kick in. Edwards over it. Luge in the box. Toza next to the decoy for Carter. His strike is over. Really impressive Aaron Carter. Young player. Really good breakout season in Tier 1. Alongside Toza being probably the two main men. But here at Genesis looking to come forward. Maidenhead working really hard to try and win that ball back. Toza and Edwards both stepping in. Stop Ribeiro. And he will be he will be Genesis' main man today. Claudio Ribeiro will look to try and isolate himself 1v1 as much as possible. A goal scorer. Quick, energetic, very, very experienced. Speaking of experience, here's Seth Burkett. Been around the block more than once. Still scoring screamers like that goal you saw last week. Tremendous left foot, tremendous mind for the game as well. Coway does really well against Luge there and turns it around. And here come Genesis. Ribeiro on the right, looks to square it. Just behind his teammate. Luan Araujo coming in on the left-hand side. Just couldn't delay his run enough. Ribeiro will be disappointed with the, that pass there. Great opportunity for Genesis to break. Made ahead ring the changes. Pastor to Carter. Carter. To Grant. Turns it. Pastor looks for the back heel. Carter can't quite get there, but manages to delay any breakaway. And then you see Cole tapping in quickly, trying to prevent Ribeiro the time to turn, and can only give away a free kick. One each on that. Three minutes in. Both teams will have to try and manage that foul count today in this one. Here's Kawe. Block placed by Shane. Shane Fernandez there with that block, and allowed Kawe to get that ball right to left. Carter in quickly to snuff out the danger from Ribeiro's forward pass. Good start to this one, not many chances, but both teams looking to probe, looking to move that ball quickly. Here's Ribeiro, can't control. And that is a maidenhead ball with Carter over it. Good defending there from the team in blue. They'll be really happy to tear one side with the way they've they've dealt early on with quite a fast start from Genesis and the, the pressure that this Genesis team can, can put you under in terms of 1v1. Kawe looking to engage tapping. He doesn't take the bait, so he has to go backwards. And ball finds Ribeiro, 1v1 with Carter. Again, no bait taken. So you see Genesis trying to draw Maidenhead out. Maidenhead quite happy to sit almost like a two third court block so far. Tapping as that top man will lead their press and lead when they lock on, just like that, and try to force mistakes where he can. Really clever, intelligent play there from Cole Tapping. Maidenhead's number seven. Up the Bedford Messi by teammate Braden Listington recently, and probably we were just talking off air with a couple of people in attendance beforehand. Probably one of the most improved players in, in the NFS this season. And Pastor just asking for five meters from referee Matt Bruffle, and that's why looking to get Aaron Carter a shooting opportunity away. Ribeiro covers ground quickly and it's on hand to block it. There'll be no disguise on this one. Ball out to the right-hand side, and Evans. 
Here's Cowey, first chuck opportunity. Evans in quickly to block out. Here's Tappin. Great ball there, looking for Carter. Good save, unorthodox by Gazzoli. First time the game's open up, Carter does well to recover. Really good work from Aaron Carter there because just for a split second, it looked like he was opening up for Ribeiro. He doesn't make that challenge, Genesis 3v1. Good challenge by Tappin, looking to engage, looking to be nice and aggressive. Maidenhead playing this game really smartly so far. Looking to see whether this Genesis team is up for the fight that will be needed as they look to step up the levels next season. It's tapping, one on this left hand side. Pastor goes to Evans. Evans wriggles through the pressure of Ribeiro. He finds Aaron Carto, just slow, happy to slow the game down, take control. And made Maidenhead quite comfortable possession so far. It's Carter again. On his favoured left. Hooks find that clever pass from the diagonal for Pastor. Just races away from him. Another couple of changes. From Rich Oxley and Josh Gillespie's team. Sosa and Lush come back into court. Tozer it is now looking to engage high. Genesis do well to play through, but Evans equally does well as the fix just to snuff out any danger. And it's Luz who goes and engages this time. And it's Evans who wins the ball. Shane Fernandez wins his team a kicking. Kawe again. Let's have it. And interestingly, the difference in the two teams. Maidenhead used a lot of their squad so far. Genesis looking to maintain this four that have been on court pretty much for the entirety in the first six minutes of this game. Cowey finds Ribeiro, and again, touch just let him down right in front of his own bench. And Christian Edwards has the ball for his kick in, finds Burkett. Tozer, happy to go square along the halfway line for Edwards. Edwards looking to engage as well. As does goalkeeper Gazzoli. Sosa's in quickly to prevent any form of counter attack. Pull off the kick in for Gazzoli. He plays short, ops to go short for Kawe. He'll look to engage 1v1, will he? Lucht as well, keeps him under control. And so far, Maidenhead will be really, really happy with the way they defended the 1v1 threats that Genesis possess. Lush. Cowie does well at the second pose, and here we go. Genesis trying to break, can they? Number that Sen has um, Iqbal on for the first time. Finds Ribeiro, great opportunity. Just in front of Iqbal, just couldn't get quite on the end of it. Let's give Harry Tozer some credit as well. He was there to prevent it. But that's the threat that Genesis can bring. Iqbal's first involvement very, very nearly resulted in a in a really good goal for his team. Here's Kawe now. Finds himself 2v1 with Toza. Skips through. Rides the challenge. Looks for the second post. And Ida Mendez, not quite on the front foot, not quite on the same wavelength. Couldn't cover that ground quickly enough to get in there. Encouraging signs, the first of the game for Genesis. Burkett gets himself in a mess, happy to just reset rather than lose possession. Again, using that experience there, Seth Burkett. 1v1 with Claudio Ribeiro, the one thing you don't want to do is lose possession. Here is Mendez. He looks to this right-hand side in Cowway. He engages 1v1 with Edwards. Does well, here's Ribeiro. Burkett does well, finds Edwards. Toza. Mainhead just happy to reset. Lush. Burkett making a really good run. Try and take away any cover. Lush looking to go 1v1, can't find it. Will happily go. Try and win the ball back. Here's Mendez. Finds Iqbal between the pivot and the winger. Happy to go back to Gazzoli. Mendez. 
and in the end, the attack counts for nothing. Maiden had possession. So Edwards it is with it. Looks for Luge on the on the maiden head right. For Barrow. Again, a feature of what we've seen from Maidenhead so far is whenever Kawe or Ribeiro have got the ball, they, they're in really, really quickly to prevent any chance of them building up a head of steam. Really smart defending from the team in blue. As Carter comes back onto court. As does Tapping. Toza. Looks for Carter. Tapping holds it up well. Goes back to Edwards. Tapping finds himself in the fixed position. Goes to help out. Just didn't quite read what Harry Tosa was looking to do there. And ball runs out from Mario Gazzoli. Goal clearance. Long into Ribeiro. Jack Payman will be happy with that one. Easy for the Maidenhead five to defend. Ball at that height for Ribeiro. It's Evans, Carter bring the ball forwards once again. Payton, Evans, Carter looking towards that second post area. Can't. Tries to retain possession. Only finds Ribeiro. Ribeiro engages 1v1 and Evans does really well to cover. Tap in. Brings it forward with Payton. He goes 1v1, good opportunity. And Gazzoli is forced into making another save. Promising moments for Maidenhead. Good opportunity. Winning the ball in a strong challenge on Claudio Ribeiro. And then driving forward with pace and purpose. His Carter on the set piece. There it is. That's 1-0. Well, we saw them threaten earlier in the game with that one. And this time, Aaron Carter... Makes no mistake. 1 0 Maidenhead. And you have to say, they thoroughly deserve it so far. 10 minutes in, they've defended the threats that Genesis can throw at them. And they've done really, really well to, to build attack after attack. And Aaron Carter with a really good strike through the legs of Mario Cazzoli. I'm sure, like any goalkeeper beaten that way, will be slightly disappointed both with his defence for not defending the set piece that's been a threat already two or three times and with himself and not dealing with, with a strike straight at him. Here is the goal scorer, Carter. Again, looking for tapping on that sort of right to left diagonal every time as they look to play. Evans this time recycles. Carter again finds Evans with that same pass. Races away from him. Here is Mendes. A little bit lost for ideas, does well to find Iqbal. And he does really well to find Ribeiro. 1 1. First sniffer goal Claudio Ribeiro's had. It's a really clever pass from Mendes. And Ribeiro. Makes no mistake with the finish. 1-1. One, one. And Genesis hit back instantly. Really clever pass. That wasn't it from Big Ida, Ida Mendez. The Genesis fix. Intelligent ball. And when you get Claudio Ribeiro into those situations. We've seen time and time again. How well he can finish them. Toza looks for Luge. He does well, but so does Mendez. And again, looking to, to get a teammate away. Both player in, players in a tangle there. Seth Burkia and Alvaro Cabral, the Genesis number seven. No foul. Good, smart referee in. Genesis have possession and a chance 
to go again. Here is Ribeiro. Nice little link up with Iqbal. Here is Cabral, finds Iqbal again. What an opportunity that is for Genesis. Really good move that. Cutting through the lines of this Maidenhead defence. And as I'm Iqbal, really should have put his team 2-1 up there. Burkett looks forwards for Luz. Luz one, runs out of play. And now Genesis, you have to feel, gained a bit of control in this one. Quite happy with the way the last minute or two of the game has gone. We'd be happy with that though. Toto quickly gets the ball back in play and there's a shot, he's off target. Luz wouldn't have really troubled Mario Gazzoli anyway, you have to feel. Toes are on the overlap, looking for now for that diag. Goes into Luce in the middle. He does well to hold off Mendez. Looks like a mismatch on visibly to start with, doesn't it? But Luce does well. And straight away, they're looking for Mendez. The long ball. He finds Cabral at the second post. And you have to say, that's two now, isn't it, for Genesis? Guilt edged opportunities where they have to try and take advantage. You have to hope they don't, from their point of view, they don't come back to hurt them. Despite those chances, with eight minutes to go, we're still at 1-1 in this one. Lush <laughs> over the kicking. Tozer in shooting position. Burkett as well. It will be Tozer. <coughs> Gazzoli does well just to get something on it. Well worked one. Ed it was Edwards coming in on that second post. Good opportunity for Maidenhead. So well drilled at these set pieces. We see time and time again. Again, Tozer just asking for the five metres. Both Ribeiro and Cabral. Just trying to uh, test referee Matt Bruffle. And set piece comes to nothing and runs right the way back into Ben Lazarus's goal area. Nice three in line. Really good move that. An equally good save from the keeper. Burkett it was who found himself in on goal. Lovely three in line played with Edwards. Cabral looking to go 1v1, wins the free kick. Really nice turn, really strong play. <laughs> Referee Matt Ruffle wants a word with Diogo Lush. Seven and a half to go. Genesis not happy, but referee deems it a final warning rather than a yellow this time. Cabral again, but Burkett in strong, and Luz brings it forward. Burkett on the overlap on that right. Luz decision making, just let him down, you have to feel. And that's a third foul, second in quick succession, seven minutes left in the half. Genesis just need to be, Maidenhead even, just need to be careful of that. Foul count beginning to just creep up. Is Evans and Toza. Evans out to tap in. He looks long and diagonal. He's cut out, but he does well. Snuff out any danger. And Lazarus come a long way and not got there. And fortunately for him, his teammates are on hand just to snuff out that danger. Toza looks for the parallel and Edwards. That's another foul, fifth of the half, second for Genesis. Yeah, 
And Ribeiro gets his final warning from other referee, Paul Whateley. Yeah, it's been a good game so far. Both teams are at it, looking to win, looking to engage. And this, another really promising moment for Maidenhead. It will look to restore their lead. They went one up through that goal from Aaron Carter before Claudio Ribeiro. So often the man for Genesis equalised. Evans' a shot is blocked and leads to nothing. And Maidenhead just struggling, you sense, at the moment with perhaps a little bit of unorthodox defending it from their point of view. Genesis on set piece is not quite doing what, what they expected. Carter finds tapping. Marshaled all the way by Mendez. But they find the ball out to Edwards on that right-hand side. There's Carter on the left now. And Cabral does really well, doesn't he, in there. Equally, Carter keeps possession. It's payment. He goes back to Evans. Tapping does well under pressure. Keeps possession. Then gives it away from Mendez, but does really well to recover. Nice big battle between those two there. And Mendez asking the referee whether there was a decision to make. They didn't feel so. Really good defending there from Jacob Evans. Making sure Stephen Martin's onto court for the first time. Can get nowhere near the ball. Great use of the body there. Payment. He goes out to Carter on the right hand side. He's looking to engage 1v1. Luan Araujo does really, really well. Maidenhead maintain possession with the kick in. Five to go. Payment. Looking to attack the cover, but Tappin's in his way. Goes back. Really good ball from Carter. Looking for Tappin at that second post. Dangerous cut out, but Maidenhead, you feel, just starting to up the ante, up the tempo in this one. It's Mendez. Carter in quickly to cut out any threat from Martins and I mean have, have the ball again. His Paintman. Nice reverse block from Tappin. Allows Paintman to attack 1v1. It's Carter in that same area again and snatch shot in the end from the kicker, Paintman. Really good from Evans, just covering Aaron Carter. Here's Cowie. Looking to engage 1v1, can only go backwards, does so, keeps possession. And he is again under a little bit of pressure, and back towards his own goal, relieves the pressure by just going over the top. And made a head ring, the changes again. Burkett. For Harry Tozer. 
foot on the ball, waits for support. Lose it as he finds it. Burkett finds Luge. The challenge by Martins. Luge getting the ball in play quickly. Toza blocked. Burkett forwards. Oh, keeper, let that one run. And very, very fortunate as he comes back off the crossbar. It's a really good ball looking for Coway. And Lazarus is on hand just to snuff out the danger. How fortunate was that for Mario Gazzoli, though? Happy to let the ball run. Got his angles wrong. And very, very nearly embarrassed. Three minutes to go in this one. Genesis corner. <laughs> yeah. More of a charge and a grab than a block, that one. And Genesis's third foul of the half. Gives easy possession to Maidenhead. Luge in quickly. And Genesis just happy to work the ball forwards and win another corner for them. And the good opportunity as Toza looks to come back into a shooting opportunity. It is Toza and he's blocked by Cowway. Struck well. Genesis we see defending the near post area. So that's something Maidenhead can look to exploit second half if they can spot the amount of space. If you look at where Seth Burkett is now on camera, so he looks to try and uh, almost work across and screen that. Gazzoli looks to get Cowway away. He drives. Maidenhead this time. Then Abramson, Abramson blocks away. And very fortunate to see that run. The right side of the post for him, wrong side for Genesis, but fast breakaway again from Kawe. Cowie. Force pass there was never going to work. Luge finds Abrahamson. Another good save from Gazzoli. Unorthodox. The Genesis goalkeeper, isn't he? But when called upon so far, he's been more than a match for Maidenhead attacks. Just a one goal. A piece so far. And Mario Gazzoli with another save for his team. It's Maidenhead United who call the first time out of the game. As they look for a way to break down the tier two South leaders. Really competitive on this. Both teams looking to probe and find a way through. So far. Pretty much, despite that one goal apiece, cancelled each other out. I think we said Genesis just causing Maidenhead a few problems on these set pieces. Defending that near post area, perhaps in that time out there. Maidenhead coaching staff will just be asking to, to try and exploit that second post area. Almost in behind the back man in this defensive shape. And you could see much, much deeper straight away, looking to create some more room. Oh. Looking for that area, but it's blocked away. But equally, Phil Lance on hand to prevent Claudio Ribeiro moving any further than the halfway line. Araujo looking for Ribeiro. Evans in quickly. Carter brings it forward. Really good challenge from Luan Araujo. 
And it's Carter who will take the kick in. Martins and Ribeiro being asked to retreat. Isn't. It's Evans who takes it, looking for the second post again. Cut out. Ribeiro looks to bring forward. No, happy to recycle. And it's Kawe. Ribeiro now on that left-hand side, engages 1v1. It's Lent who cuts it out. It's Carter, can't get it under control. The referee deems that a foul. Maidenhead's fourth of the half. One minute 40 left on the clock. And Genesis call their timeout. Chance perhaps just to think about how they're going to win that fifth foul and also how they're going to engage to on this set piece. Really good area for them now to try and try and build a bit of pressure on Maidenhead as we go into the halftime break. They'll be really pleased with their performance. Maidenhead flying so far this season, challenging for that top four as we discussed earlier. A flying start to the season, put them in a really good position. And for Genesis, promotion, I'm sure, will be their priority. But the chance to reach both cup finals as a tier two side would be something no one will have predicted at the start of the season, and something I'm sure after the heartbreak of, of losing in the playoffs last year. <laughs> they would feel would be a, a really great way of bouncing back. Shane Fayon. Fernandez back onto court. It's him, Araujo, pretty much Genesis, well it is Genesis starting five back on court now to finish this half. Not sure. That's what was would have been in the plan on that timeout. It's Kawe. Goes back for Luan Araujo. Kawe again. Looks for Fernandez. Really good. Give and go with Ribeiro. Just ran out room. Ribeiro frustrated with himself. Really clever. False pivot play from Claudio Ribeiro dropping between the lines, looking to come and support his wingers. Lant looks for Carter. And now comes to the left and Evans. It's Pastor. Finds his captain Lant again. He goes diagonal for Carter. Just lost his foot in as that ball was coming across. And it runs out for Gazzoli to restart play on the goal clearance. Here's Ribeiro. Good challenge. Evans in quickly to snuff out the danger and wins back possession for his team. Pastor. Under hit pass from Evans there and a chance for Genesis to break maybe. Cowway on this right hand side. Land does well to delay. But here's Ribeiro. Can't find the second post and Shane Fernandez. So Aaron Carter is there to snuff out the danger. Good opening again for Genesis. Fernandez fouled. Was he? No. Nothing given. Just a kick in for Genesis. and Carter looking to be aggressive there on the top line of the defence and two or three take your pick but a four foul of the half now for Genesis 14 seconds left on the clock free kick for Maidenhead in a really good area given some of the shooting opportunities that they have and one of them Harry Toza comes back in for this as does Diogo Luch. So Lush, Carter, Evans, and Toza 
on court. Ribeiro contesting something with referee Paul Whiteley. Referee telling Lush to wait for the whistle. I'm sure he will. Quite happy to set this up. And you can see Evans and Tozer it is on this left-hand side. Ribeiro looking to step across and screen, perhaps. It's Toza straight at the goalkeeper who looks to release Ribeiro. Lazarus travels a long way, doesn't win the ball, and that is a foul, the fifth of the half. Gives the referee a decision to make. Just yellow. For the maidenhead, number one, probably the right decision. Shot not on target, not clear. Goal scoring was it anyway. And of course, within the rules, there's the, the double jeopardy. No one in back in behind him anyway. And now it's Genesis with free kick in a good area. And Mendez and Kawe over the ball. I was watching Mendez in the warm up. He possesses some power in that left foot. See whether this is a shot of goal or whether they have a routine that they're going to look to use. Just seven seconds left on the clock. It is Mendez and he's straight at Lazarus. And Phil Len is happy to clear for a Genesis kick in. Genesis asking for a corner there. Seemingly, initially, Maidenhead was setting up as though they were defending a corner, but referee says no, and Maidenhead happy to see out the half at 1-1. Really good competitive game so far. Both teams probing, looking for ways through, looking to go and win it. But at halftime, it's 1-1 in the first League Cup semi-final of the day. It's tier 2 South Genesis come from behind to be level with Maidenhead United. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly for the second half in this one.
welcome back to Repton then. And I'm delighted to say that I'm sure you're all sick of listening to my voice. So I'm joined by former Bloomsbury head coach and England... What's the official Men, title? Men's performance coach. Men's performance coach. One Tapia Owens. When nice to meet, see you. Not uh, nice to meet you, Matt. I've yeah. already met you a few times. <laughs> what um, What do you think of the first half in that one? Yeah, it was solid. I think Genesis are, are trying to play a little bit more low risk, especially at the back of the court, but then taking a little bit more r- risk as they get up the court. Of course, they got some good one v one players in Claudio and Carway. Carway's had a bit of success already, but made an edit getting. Some good cover just behind him. He's had a few opportunities, but yeah, Maidenhead looked good foot south side. They've managed to to try and punish Genesis off one set piece. There's also been a couple more that they probably could have got goals from, but yeah, excited to see second half and see where it goes, especially in a cup format where teams are going to have to come out of their shells a little bit. Is it? Do you think what we expected? I mean, I was talking on air myself during the first half about this one was probably the game where. You looked at the four in the day, and it was the most intriguing one. Genesis have been really, really strong in Tier 2 South, and we know Maidenhead have done really well. Is this what you'd have expected at this stage in this half, do you think? Or Yeah, I think it could have gone one of two ways, of course. I know that if the game opens up, it probably suits Genesis a little bit more with, with the individual quality they've got and probably from transitions which they're looking for. I think Maidenhead have done well in terms of controlling that and making sure that any sort of counter-attacks are sort of controlled very quickly either through fouls or disrupting it you saw Maiden get up to five fouls so it's one of those that Genesis will probably hope the game opens up a little bit more and maybe exploit a couple of those situations and if not fouls may come into play of course for that extra time where they carry on from this half as well. So we're back underway then and immediately Harry Toes and Seth Burkett back in possession. We saw feature of the first half was the the way Genesis, sorry, Maidenhead even used Toza, especially to try and control that game, as Byron was just talking about. That one leads to nothing. And straight out play, Gazzoli, a couple of good saves I was talking about first half. Unorthodox keeper, but experience, isn't he? And been around the game and somehow gets something on it. We disappointed with that throw, though. Yeah, I think that he's, always, he's played at a World Cup, so you know the quality that he's got. And a good save there from, from Laz as well. But you know the quality that, that Mario's got. He's played for Helvetia, played at a World Cup. So, yeah, very, very solid keeper. I'm sure he'd be disappointed with the goal. sort of. But they're quite difficult for the keeper, especially straight at keeper's legs. Always really hard to readjust. Good couple of early opportunities there. On, as we were talking, first save well by Ben Lazarus, as one mentioned. And then second one deflected over from Cowie's effort. Genesis corner, Iqbal to take. Back for Ribeiro. Got that one wrong. And this time Maidenhead looking to go along quickly. Into Luge, which you can't control. First yeah, he probably should have angled the throw a little bit more to get Diogo to run onto it, as opposed to it's quite, um, it quite diagonal. If he would have straightened up that pass and allowed the diagonal run onto it, I think it would have had a good opportunity there. So a nips in. Puts that one out for a kick in, but snuffs out the danger of any sort of counter attack. And it's Kawe to take it back to Mario Gazzoli in the Genesis goal. And Genesis look forward for Ribeiro. Doubled up again. And Edwards in quick to support Burkett. How have you found Genesis have changed from last year, Matt? I know that obviously you played them in the playoffs as well be interested on your half like what what you've seen differently from from them and the r- new recruits especially yeah so i think visibly we were on the day quite relieved with with the squad that turned up they were missing quite a few on the day which was really disappointing at the time just pauses a good chance perhaps here for Sosa locked away and Kawai didn't play he was injured in that game um but i think obviously the the strength they've been able to add through Claudio coming in and a couple of players who they've added around it. I mean, we've seen Ida Mendes play quite a few minutes today off at the moment, just stood in the corner um, by his goalkeeper's, uh, his goalkeeper's end. I, I think they've they've become a much quicker side than what they were in that game. We were able to sort of sit quite deep and block them off and, and use our weapons. Was as he gets squared. It's a really good save, Ben Lazarus. Iqbal. Again, found himself second post, similar to the first half. Kept his shot down this time, but Ben Laz sliding in. How many times have we said that from him this season? Yeah, and I think that's one of his his real strengths, especially if the ball does go across goal. He covers the bottom 
the bottom half of the goal very well. See another great save there. But yeah, it covers the bottom of the half of the goal really well. So I've been looking from, from the team really to exploit those high areas, especially when the ball's going across goal, because he does defend that bottom half quite well. Um, and then very similar with, with, with Mario there, another shot across the floor. I'd like to see a little bit more finesse on the finishing and players thinking about the finishing in terms of what, what, what keepers they're playing against. And just go back to it, on, on Genesis last year, we saw um, a lot of their play went through the guy you signed for the Champions League campaign. Yeah. Thought, who was Portuguese, like was now, I can't remember his name, to be fair. But, um, a lot of the play went through him, and he, he was very, very sort of, a lot slower than what they what they they, they do now. And I, whether that was part of the game on the day because of players they were missing, or whether it was a feature of their play last year, but I just feel that they possess a much bigger threat with the pace they try and play at and the 1v1 weapons that they now have. And, and let's be fair to, to Claudio as well, as much as he's a, he's a weapon in terms of those 1v1 situations, a great finisher and very experienced as well. And I just think he seems to have added, I was listening to him on court first half, he's very intelligent player in the way that he's sort of supporting the other players on court as well. Yeah, no, definitely. And Edwards looks for Luge. Well, I'm not sure why he's played not played advantage there. Um, but yeah, no, I think to you to add to your point as well, just on on them, it's been quite intriguing watching them play and and seeing them attacking a lot more spaces and balls in behind and beyond. Not something that, as I say, you would really associate with with Carway and Claudio, who probably want it into feet and, and to dribble. But to see them running beyond players without the ball and sort of getting those balls into space just adds another dynamic to their team. And I can see why they've probably been quite successful this year. And I'm sure they'll be very dangerous, of course, if they do. Um, come up this season to tier one for for any team. Speaking of dangerous, a really good opportunity here for Maidenhead to try and get back in front. Yeah, so classic L shape, which will be blocked and then either played to the back post or then squared across. Um, let's say if that player jumps, then of course Harry's still on in there. But yeah, just getting probably the technical detail of that back post one. Probably Diogo should have stayed out a little bit wider if he is staying back post to exploit that passing lane. Here is Kiawe, breaks through. Just wide, that's the threat, isn't it? That's what they're looking to do. That's where him and Claudio are at their best. Yeah, and you can see again, like Laz comes out quite quickly. And again, that's an opportunity where you can wrap your foot around that one and go to the back post area a little bit higher, mid-height. Yeah, there just, it is. Like, just like that. So yeah, I think as, as long as they can suss that out and maybe exploit those situations a little bit more, they're getting a lot of breakaway opportunities, 1v1s, 2v1s, and just that finesse in finishing in terms of exploiting those high areas against the goalkeeper. I think they'll, they'll be able to put one or two more away. So yeah, really good to see Carway on the, course, on the score sheet again. Yeah, he's a great strike, isn't it? He puts his team in front, 2-1. Disappointing one for Maidenhead. Genesis, you hear the noise straight away. They'll be thrilled with that. They have to work really hard for this lead. I think they'll just sit back as they have been doing for the, for the first half. Sit back, try and control that momentum a little bit now and try and exploit on the counter-attack a couple of times. If they can get a sort of two-goal lead, I think it puts them in a good opportunity to, to win the game as well. Evans on the kick in then. Carter looking to come short, similar to his goal. Blocked away by Ribeiro. This time Carter to take it. But again, only hits Ribeiro. Used that one a number of times now. And it's Genesis to come away. Evans just really well. Just to cover in behind Carter, who was beat. Cowways run. Yeah, they've used that kicking quite a few times now, looking to get Aaron Carter the shot at goal. I think there's an opportunity then after the, the first couple of times, if you're getting similar kickings in the same opportunities, you can play a bit of a game of chess or, or snooker and maybe set up your second or third one through the first one. It would have been nice maybe to see a blocker on the first one, let the ball go through, and then that second one, then the defender's more likely to jump. So I think a bit more variation in those situations. I think they'll be very dangerous as they were in the first half. Um, Genesis may struggle a little bit organising offset pieces. So yeah, really good opportunity for Maidenhead to exploit there. 
Here's Ribeiro. Some Kelly magic. Get anything. And again, early whistle there, I'm sure. If possible. Maidenhead would have liked just to have seen the referee wait a little bit longer with that one. But a couple of times now where we've just seen an, an early whistle, perhaps just give the teams a little bit of a chance to play. But this game just feels like it's got a little bit scrappy and a little bit more how Genesis would want to approach it. Like yeah, and you, you know, it's like, Matt, the, the game, the, a goal happens in the game and it opens up a little bit. I feel, it, of course, with the nature of it being a cup game, made in it, how now have to now get back into it quite quickly. Um, if not, um, you'll see it sort of drift away from a little bit and I think that's the situation where Genesis won't, won't really want to concede in the next five minutes and that's probably why they're trying to make those fouls straight away if, if they do concede the ball high up. Evans looks for Carter again. Sapin. Main then happy just to maintain possession, perhaps try and get a little bit more control once again on this one. Evans looking long, but Iqbal on hand just to snuff it out, and Ribeiro straight away looking to engage. Engages Evans as well, and really close to sliding it into just inside, it just goes the wrong side of Ben Lazarus's right hand post, but clear purpose and direction from Ribeiro. You see what he's trying to do every time he gets it now. Yeah, uh, I think this is where Maidenhead could probably verticalize it a little bit more. I know that they're predominantly 4-0 side, but you can see here how, how really deep Genesis is sitting in terms of the lack of spaces behind, behind them or in between them, it allows them then to push on. I think by having sort of that high reference point down the line where the, where the gaps may be, made a stretch and hurt Genesis, get them running back to their own goal on a couple of occasions, um, as you can see here with Claudia. Here is Ribeiro. Yeah, very similar to what Maidenhead could, could do now as well. Try and send somebody a little bit higher. Harry Toza can do the, that situation. Diogo is coming on as well, can, can also do that. Just stretch it a little bit and try and try and punish them, try and get a few shots on goal, um, just cause a different question for, the, for, for Genesis to resolve. Gazzoli looks for Araujo. Plays inside, fortunately perhaps runs to Ribeiro, who can only run that ball out of play. <laughs> Referee counting, so Jack Payman has to reset and come and use the ball. As you say, Diego Lush onto court, Toza, Burke, yep. Just running that room. Yeah, it's like I said, there's, there's not a lot of space in, in between the lines and beyond the line and beyond the lines as well, so they need to try and stretch that if they do want to play in the pockets, um, so th they need that reference point, I think. Another great save from Laz. It's a really good save, isn't it? It's Coway again, causing problems on their right hand side. He's able to square, and Ribeiro, you can see his frustration at this second post area, disappointed in himself. Mendez onto court and immediately away, but not willing to recover, and just for a split second, Harry Toza was, almost had the whole half in yeah. front of his himself and Lazarus just not quite set Mainhead happy now to just slow the tempo down perhaps and get back control of this ball here's Diego Lush Edwards with the underlap right here is Cowie again good save Ben Lazarus yeah Ben Lazarus got his arm up there quite quick which is which is really positive but again losing the ball quite centrally through through lack of playing those forward passes and then dribbling into those areas where there, there are bodies, it's just punishing them at the moment. And I think they need to try and play forward passes. They need to try and stretch Genesis a little bit more um, rather than playing too many horizontal passes or, or dribbling horizontally as well, which is really allowing Genesis to, to, to create so many turnovers, which is really killing me there. It's a really difficult court to play on, actually, as well, if you, you're trying to play 4-0, isn't it? And as you say... Trying to get someone vertical and quite high is it something that we've had quite a 
quite a lot of joy with when we when we were at full strength this season and then in other occasions when we're missing pivots at Derby we we really struggle for the same reason and the same thing I think that Maidenhead are probably finding here really good from Seth and then just gets caught just overplaying has to concede the kick in yeah of course there are new sides to the league this season Matt as, as well as yourselves like how have you found in the games against them so uh, both games against them have been really interesting actually the first one of the season where they had um, we, when we got, the we got the calendar and we got the fixtures we actually felt they had a really good start compared to ours and um, would give them a chance of, of building a bit of a footing they were able to recruit quite well as well probably better than we've been able to, to recruit and probably a slightly different strategy where we wanted to give players an opportunity who had earned that right um, and then from there, I think we had a really close game, which was 3-3. Could have gone either way in the first game at Gunnersbury. And then we actually had to reverse our our home game as such because Repton was unavailable and ended up playing them at Bradfield, which is an unusual court with it being quite a short court and very wide. And we really struggled with the court and they, they took full advantage on the day and felt, felt they thoroughly deserved the win just through finishing chances, really. Um, I think that's been our biggest our biggest challenge and the thing we've struggled with more than them is um, perhaps because we've been under pressure and in a battle all season. It's Ribera who's forward. Decision for the referee now. Yeah, I think I think yellow card's right. Yeah. Wasn't a 1v1s, not a dog so, um, which is a direct advantage, of course, with a numerical advantage but yeah yellow card's about right and it's one of them who were on no fouls in the half 12 minutes to go at 2-1 as a coach you're probably really happy with the, the foul and the yellow aren't you in terms of what well, I think I would be in terms of killing the game and not leaving your keeper as exposed as yeah because I think like we said that that third goal or the two goal advantage could really put this game out of sight for, for Maidenhead at the moment it'll be interesting to see what they use in terms of fly keeper but that two goal advantage could, could be quite important. Do feel that Genesis are just are just coming at it a little bit more at the moment. I know that they've sort of submitted a lot of possession, but they have had a lot of counter-attacking opportunities in the last five minutes since that goal. And I think Maidenhead just maybe need to, to try and play a little bit more low risk at the moment for the next five minutes and see it through. Great save again, Ben Lazarus. Really good routine. Looking for Mendez's left foot. We spoke about it first half, real weapon. The intelligent player and Claudia keeps that alive and blocked away. Yeah, so if you see that first one, Claudio's blocked for, for the shot on the outside, and then he's had a little talk with, with both players, and then they've decided to vary it slightly through that first line jump. And that and that's something again that you see Claudio's importance in terms of understanding of the game and, and reading what his man is doing. And then sort of adjusting that for the second one. So it's a really smart play. And it's the side of his game that probably really developed the last couple of years, isn't it? And probably went a little bit unnoticed when he was at Helvetia, just how intelligent a player he is. But it's been playing at the level that he played at in the games that he have played in. Yeah, he's a really good guy as well, pot of gold. And, and I think like working with Enrique at Helvetia, of course, good coach, would have learned a lot, especially with the players of, of learning the Rayoni as well. Uh, when he was still playing, uh, Totti, of course really good player so he's had a lot of players to learn from a good coach as well and now as I say he's a more senior player that, that he can have this impact on another team as well and I know through talking with Trevor I know he's a club that's in his heart isn't it Claudio and been there before was there before Helvetia and almost gone home <coughs> and probably sees a, a different role for himself in being a leader and a little bit of a mentor to some of the, the young players and the, the great work that goes on behind the scenes at Genesis. I think it was only natural for him to come back, especially. Oh, that's right. <laughs> really, really. Yeah, and, that, and that's and that's one of the moments we were saying at half time as well. Like it, it's interesting to see how they can be a little bit more unpredictable now. That's come from a long ball over the top with with Claudio dropping in and the car way overlapping into the space. He's left it and then he's just volleyed it. Something you wouldn't really associate probably before with Genesis, who probably want the ball to feet quite a lot. So it's interesting to see that how they can mix it up. Barrow looking for Mendez and another good save, Ben Lazarus. And again, 
mixing it up. Ribeiro dropping deep in that false pivot position, almost that underlapping run. I think it's a naturally good point now maybe for Maidenhead to call the timeout, sort of take the sting out of the game um, and sort of just reassess what's going on at the moment. Genesis are getting a lot of opportunities, a lot of shots in the last six minutes and you can feel sort of that, that third goal coming which could be quite detrimental. For the time being, they're resisting that urge and happy it seems to continue to play. But Another bank of four subs ready to come on. Lant looks for Pastor. Carter managed to wriggle through. Again, but he's managed to get the free kick, but a situation where he's in the middle of the pitch where there's four bodies around him. I just think I'd like to see them stretch it a little bit more at the moment and just cause, cause Genesis some different problems as well. One where Aaron Carter manages to wriggle through, but it's all in comfortable areas, isn't it? They'll be happy with, with players behind the ball. Where uh, Maiden had a play him. Carter over it then. Looks left for Lant. And then straight Cowway. And again, Genesis are off with Ribeiro. There it is. That's the third. And again, very similar to what we've seen as the theme of the half. Genesis waiting to pick off the mistake and in transition, they've been clinical since half time. Uh, uh, and we talk about them as, as good 1v1 players. I think a lot of the time what, what goes under the radar is, is how good they are as 1v1 defenders as well. The ability Claudio has to defend and then wrap his leg around and steal the ball, not just to disrupt, but to actually steal it and then go forward. I think you saw it a lot in his Helvetia days as well, where you wouldn't be able to beat him 1v1 and then he'd still come out with the ball um, and then they'd punish you with, it, with a transition moment like that. And I think that's where, again, it'd be good to see them recognise that and see, the, see the, one of Claudio's strengths and Carway's strengths is also stealing the ball and then going on forward. Um, so I think that lowering that risk could be quite positive for, for Maidenhead. Again, almost on cue, Kawe shields that ball back, not beaten 1v1, and Genesis able to maintain possession again. Here is Mendez, looks for Kawe, slightly isolated, does well. He'd be happy to go long, find Ribeiro, great first touch. And in the end, Seth Burkett and Ari Toza just forced the clear lines and it's a Genesis kick in. Yeah, but it's, it's really good to watch. Like You've seen two players at the back of the court there, two two players higher, so playing more of a 2-2 two -two there. But then then the, the last player over there has, has floated high up the court and Carway's been left by himself. His ability to travel with the ball under pressure and then play a ball over the top to Claudio is it, just unbelievable. It's bravery, isn't it, as yeah. well? And, and, and I think also a bit of intelligence from... It was Mendez who was back with him to give him that ball and almost not so many times we say it, you can get caught in that situation where you're two and two and we've had it a few times where the wrong player will almost try and overplay and for us at Derby we'll have someone like Fraser Corden who you want to have on the ball and you're happy to go and engage good save again from Gazzoli perhaps Cole tapping a little bit slow there to get in on that second post but good opportunity Seth didn't catch that one then Keeps the move alive, Edwards. Good defending again. His toes are in a chance maybe, but still two Genesis players back. Gets his strike away. Gazzoli does well. Yeah, and no, I feel like if you see the two situations just then, they, they need to finalise with that ball off court. Because if not, they're going to cause themselves more problems again with Carway then breaking forward and stealing that on court. The more that they can finish actions and it ends up off court, the more they can limit themselves to counter-attacks. Um, so I think it's just being a little bit more finesse with if they do see the, them being overpowered defensively. Can we, can we clip it long? Can we get a shot at goal? At least it then goes off. It's Toza. And again, that's what we're discussing it. Straight into the keeper's arms and Edwards forced into making a good challenge 1v1 with Ribeiro. They're kicking.
What would you be thinking now, Matt, if you were made an ed in terms of setting up? What, what's your plan for the next seven and seven minutes and a half sort of remaining? Would you be thinking about going fly keeper now? Um, or would you wait a little bit longer? I think I, I on this on this court, I think the difficulty you always have trying to play 4-0 on here is the lack of width and the lack of space that he gives you in the areas where you, you want to try and get the ball. So I, I think I'd be wanting to get somebody high, as you've been saying. Try Can you get some joy in trying to go in a bit more direct and a bit quicker, perhaps, with that? And then, yeah, with seven and a half minutes left, you've got to start a 3-1 in a cup game. Think about fly goalkeeper and when, you, when to go for it. I think you want to almost give yourself a good amount of time to try and try and win the game. From that, yeah, I think I think the problem is if you leave it too long, it, you, yes. you could then concede another goal, and then yeah. you've got to get three. If, at least if you go with seven minutes and you do concede that fourth goal, you've still got seven minutes then to get three goals. Um, it also, I'd, I'd like to see them maybe just use it for a couple of attacks, maybe suss out what Genesis is going to do defensively from it, and then maybe call that timeout after, um, and then go through what the what the potential options could be. Something similar to what we I saw in the last game before you before you arrived when Manchester B did exactly that, where they gone in, they used the fly goalkeeper for a couple of attacks and then completely changed system once they'd worked out how can we're gonna defend it and okay, game was already over for them, but they were able to get some joy with it and eventually scored and I'm sure as a learning point for a young side there they were quite happy with that. This one's slightly different. Maidenhead still looking to get something from it. They led, of course, before Genesis, Genesis equalised first half. And since the half-time whistle, it has been all about Genesis. They lead 3-1. Kawe and Claudia Ribeiro, really at the heart of everything they've done well. Here is Ribeiro. Gain, looking to engage, good defending. And now a chance, perhaps, for Maidenhead. Luge. Wayward with his shot. Yeah, I think that I don't think the set or shot were, were, were quite there. It would have been nice maybe then to play it to Phil Lant, who's also on back post, and combine just that extra pass probably. <laughs> Pastor there, just happy to. Hold on almost to Kawe. Really good little duality from Ribeiro, wasn't it, with the back heel? And he almost found himself in the same area as well. So, yeah. an orthodox one. You can see the individual quality. It just seems like Kawe at the moment's running a little bit right and, and having opportunities to, to beat players 1v1. Um, that situation again, I, I think Pastor's done well because if not, again, it would have probably been two versus the keeper even. Um, and that's I think that would be game, set, and match at that point. Maidenhead with work to do. Tier 2 South leaders, Genesis, 3-1 up. In control of this half as well. And enjoying themselves. There's Kawe again. Genesis happy to recycle back to Gazzoli and then look to go forward. Lant is there. The store back to land. Loose pass. Able to retain possession. And just what that does do is allow Genesis the time to get back and set up. And as as you touched on earlier, when they're quite happy to to sit in, sit deep, and wait for the wait for the opportunities now with with that lead intact. I think, like especially considering Carway, look again, steals it. Given Carway and Claudia are playing a lot of minutes, it, it, it kind of suits that ability to be able to do that as well. Um, and then they've got the energy to, to break on and go forward when they, when they do steal it. Dugo Lush then over this kicking. Carway looking to be nice and aggressive, and for once probably did disguise. Looking for that second post area and didn't quite work out, but 
Yeah, real opportunity for Medina from set pieces, which at the moment are a few are, are just nearly theirs. And I think that it's looking back, they probably have a look at a couple of set pieces where they probably should have scored from. Here's Iqbal. Finds Kawi again. And another great strike. Kawi de Silva gets his second, gets his team's fourth. And as you say, that could now be game set and possibly match that three goal advantage. It's a huge problem now for Maidenhead. Yeah, I've been impressed with Genesis in terms of just at all round at the moment, like their ability to, to play at different speeds, different tempos. You've seen them prolonging possessions a little bit more when they get the ball at the moment as well, just to take the sting out of it. But then out of possession, being a little bit electric when they do steal it going forward, allowing Carway in. Claudio that freedom to, to be the players that really do that damage um, going forward. You can see Carway from his finishing ability that, that yeah, he's, he's, he's top notch. Again, another opportunity here. That's a brilliant save from Mario as well. Fantastic save from Guzzoli because it spun up, didn't it? And just for a split second, looked like he might beat him. Yeah, they've got they've got a well-rounded squad in terms of again good goalkeeper, good false pivot in Claudio Carway of course, and some experience around there. Nello's a top manager and has sort of taught them well in terms of what to do. Uh, I've really been impressed with Mendes as well on, on on the side, and let's not forget like all the youngsters that that Trevor's done some incredible work with in terms of his stuff with charities and in, in the East London area. Um, and bringing those through and, and sort of helping that community through futsal. So it's, it's real credit and, and I think to see them back in tier one would be class. Um, and in particular, like you can see that, that from a sort of playing perspective, they are of a tier one standard. They've now managed with this, if they do, do get through, the, they will have reached both cup finals, which again for a tier two side is just phenomenal. And I think the biggest thing for me from them, from where they were at this time last year, they came here in the playoffs and we were the third game, there's a lot to play. Like any of three teams could, Wessex were up, but any of us, Maidenhead or Genesis, could go up, depending on results that day. And they almost, it was almost like they turned up with half a group. And you know, it was a little bit deflating, I think, from their point of view, given what they got there. Whereas now you see them, it's a much stronger group, um, which looks a much stronger club, probably for that disappointment as well last year. and feels like the right time for them to to make that step up doesn't it and they've they've dominated tier two south this year and as you say two cup finals as a as a, as a second division team shows you just how good they are here is Iqbal I think I think the thing is they've, they've got such consistency in players like if you look at Alvaro if you're looking at, at Claudio of course he's come back Carway who, who's been there as well Iqbal as well that they've been there for quite a long time and I think for, for a coach, especially Nello, to, to be able to build that up over a few years with the same players and then just add one or two in every year is it, it, sort of a coach's dream in terms of embedding your philosophy and then having it easier when one player comes in that the players around him knows it as well as you as a coach are able to help that. Four fouls now for Maidenhead and a third yellow card, this time for Carl Tappin. Genesis, you just sent happy to engage where they can, win free kicks where they can and enjoy themselves with this. Got themselves three and a half minutes to go, lead the game 4-1. A really, really good position. Yeah, and I think they've just, they've not really allowed Maynard to get back into it um, in terms of the, the way that they've controlled probably the game the last five minutes. Um, let them see him going back to Mario now and just happy to, to put the foot on the ball, play a little bit more low risk as well, so that th the way that they've done that and, and, and managed that tempo has been quite good. Trubero again, and this time chance snuffed out, just couldn't quite adjust his feet there, Alvaro Cabral. Happy to settle for the set piece, and he'll go back to Ribeiro, who equally sends his keeper back and then gives him the ball, and here is Kawe again. The chance here, Cabral just, just scuffs it in the end, doesn't he? And give Ben Lazarus some credit, covered ground well once again. And of course, 
at the scoreboard, to be honest, since yeah. since half time with with his own personal performance. And yeah, it's good to see Laz in tier one, especially like all the all the work that he's done over the last few years, especially when he w when he was at University of Nottingham. Probably didn't have the the success that he warranted from there, but in terms of he's he spent a lot of time learning the game. Really good guy, asks a load of questions. Has definitely worked physically in the gym. You can see how how slim he is, how how flexible he is as well. Um, so really good to see him in tier one and definitely warranted in terms of the success that, that he's had over the last couple of seasons. Yeah, I knew in both games against Derby this year, he had, there were stages in the game where they were up against it and we, we seemed to be getting a number of shots away and he was had a fantastic performance in them. And at times that's what you need, don't you? Poor set piece here and... Genesis away again. Here is Mendez, heavy touch. I think it, yeah, I think again, just an opportunity from a set piece there. You can see Genesis are set up with a 2-2, two -two, an aggressive 2-2, two -two and the, the probably opportunities are, are in between the lines and firing that ball into the middle. Um, and all the players coming around it, maybe having that strike on the outside or that shoot from the outside as a decoy to then sort of exploit that middle pass probably would be a lot more beneficial. Yeah, it was something before you joined me at half-time and saying... First half, here's Mendez again. Great feet. Another good Ben Lazarus save. This time from Cabral. But again, Mendez impressing this time. Yeah, and I think Laz does that so well, like we said before, when he when he covers the, the ground across goal quite well. I think sometimes you need that extra pass against him because he commits so much in a positive way to try and make that back post save. If, if you can get that secondary runner there for the setback and then tap in, it would be quite easy. But, yeah, Matt, what would you be saying if you were made in the head now in terms of this timeout? Uh, so I think from from my point of view, uh, I think at this stage now I'd be wanting to go fly goalkeeper. You, what, a little bit under three minutes left on the clock. Um, ish, and, yeah, you'd be looking to go fly goalkeeper. What can we get back into it? Whether they will or not, I can't see it. It looks like Ben Laz is coming back onto court, but... I think I'd be wanting to try and they've not had much joy, they've not created much in this half. Can we use that fly keeper to just now try and create something in in the game and, and f try and find a way back in, just try and build a little bit of pressure with it what about yourself? Yeah, very similar. I think it's just a case of causing probably Genesis a different problem to, to one that what they've had previously. I can't really see the fly goalkeeper shirt out at the moment. Um, so whether that's a tactical decision or, or, or usually sometimes a logistical one as yeah. well, Matt. Um, but <laughs> yeah, d I'm not too sure what they're, what they're going to be doing at the moment and whether they try something different. But yeah, it could have been a set piece. It did look uh, well worked. But I think for them it's just giving them a little bit more belief maybe and, and, and sort of alluding to the fact of if they have been still getting opportunities and shots at goal and they can still do damage um, from the set pieces area. That's the one that I was saying with that player jumping the outside shot. They do need to look inside a little bit more as well. Okay, good opportunity. Carter goes down, nothing in it. Loosh keeps the attack alive and able to win a kick in. But straight away, as you say, when going a little bit shorter on that set piece, not just looking for that almost set and shoot as giving them a, an opportunity and there we go they've got one back good strike from Diego Luch yeah and you see there like rather than running onto the set piece you can see the Genesis were already set up in a wall so the fact that he's played it back allows that passing lane to be able to shoot or to go to that back post area so yeah once once they do set up in that um, in that sort of wall area already Rather than running onto it, it's a good opportunity for them to, to set it back a little bit more and exploit that gap. Carter. So yeah, playing with a bit more intensity now and playing a little bit more forward. Like we said already, Harry Gonin's floating out into a false pivot position and playing vertically and combining vertically, just causing a Genesis a little bit more, more of a problem. And then all of a sudden, players have to be running back to their own goal. And that's where you can pick up those secondary runners if the player, if the defender doesn't track him. This time it's Luge in that false pivot position. And again, unlucky, didn't quite catch it, but pass in the right area. Ribeiro looking to run off Carter, touch just perhaps let him down. Runs out for the kick in though. And Genesis happy to retreat 
Yeah. Must come back to a half court. Yeah. Edwards to Carter. Toza. Mendez out quickly to block off shooting opportunity. That's better, isn't it? Straight away, a little bit more purpose to, to the way. Not that one, though. As Mendez brings away, he finds Ribeiro. No. I think they've, they've tried that too many too too often this game. Like those diagonal balls, especially against a low block team, can be so dangerous to, to intercept. And then, especially, it'll take two players minimum out of your game. And that's where Genesis have got success from trying to force that diagonal ball into bodies, either um, forcing the pass or the dribble, and then being able to exploit that overload. Kiawe concedes the corner. A little bit disappointed he felt he was pushed, I think. Oops, uh, a little bit of game through shit from him, but. Good opportunity, and L L referee, I think, killed Diogo Luch there, <laughs> being on, on court. He's made a really good run into that area we mentioned earlier. I think this was the one I was talking about first half as well, when they're defending that 2-2 area, is if you could get almost blind side of Claudio, the second post is open if you can yeah. find that ball across. And He's been there a couple of times and never really attacked it. In the end... Genesis thoroughly deserving of a 4-2 win and a place in a second cup final win. Yeah, who do you mean your, your man of the match, Matt? I think he'd be Claudio for me. I thought he was exceptional, not just in the way that he attacked the game, but the way he defended as well. Closely run by Cowie. Yeah, and no, I fully, fully agree. I think I think Mendes, Mendes has done well. Um, and, and of course, Ben Laz from Maidenhead yeah. has probably kept that score down at, at certain periods, especially in that second half when when Genesis did have a few a few occasions from the counter attack, but yeah, Claudio and Claudio and Carway really running right, especially in that second half. Yeah. So it finishes four two then in the first of our two League Cup semi finals. Stay with us. We've got Loughborough and Manchester to come. <laughs> 